we have agreed a set of principles and guidelines on a Syrian-led transition that any political settlement should deliver to the people of Syria. We have offered a perspective for the future that can be shared by all in Syria, a genuinely democratic and pluralistic state with free and fair elections, full respect for human rights and the rule of law, equal access to opportunities for all, and assurances that the rights of smaller communities will be respected. As and when necessary and in emergencies. So thank you for coming. The key steps in any transition include the establishment of a transitional governing body which can establish a neutral environment in which the transition can take place. That means the transitional governing body would exercise full executive powers. The transitional governing body could include members of the present government and the opposition and other groups should be formed on a basis of a mutual consent. The action group has pledged action and they are sending a message of determination and hope. But today's words must not become tomorrow's disappointments. The hard work starts now. We must work together to implement what has been agreed. We cannot do this alone. I hope all in Syria will embrace what has been laid out here and work with us to stop the killing and build a better future. Mr. Haig, to make a statement. The five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council welcome the outcome of the Action Group for Syria in Geneva on the 30th of June. They commend the leadership of the Joint Special Envoy, Mr. Kofi Annan, and reiterate their commitment to supporting the Joint Special Envoy and full implementation of his six-point plan and Security Council resolutions 2042 and 2043. The document makes it clear that, uh, that we, we have provided guidelines and principles to assist the Syrian parties as they move ahead with their transition and establish a transition government and go through the changes that will be required. I think uh, the government will have to be formed through discussion, negotiations, and by mutual consent. And I will doubt that the Syrians who have fought so hard for their independence to be able to have a say in how they are governed and who governs them will select people with blood on their hands to lead them. This meeting began under the shadow. As I've always maintained, it's when the international community speaks with one voice that that voice becomes powerful and has an impact. And I think we are seeing the international community coming together and, and their unity and cooperation can be lifted to a higher level and is beginning now. In these sort of situations, leaders and people engage in it say things today that may change completely uh, tomorrow. And sometimes messages are issued and the intended target may be different from those who receive them. I expect the Syrian parties to cooperate. I expect them to understand the gravity of the situation. I expect them to understand that the strong transformational wind which is blowing today cannot be resisted at least it cannot be resisted for long. My name is Mohammed Turnum. When the time comes for me to ask him to designate an empowered interlocutor for us to continue the process, he, was he will be prepared to do so. And that is one of the first things. When the process starts, he would be expected to do, and the opposition would be expected to also name their interlocutors so that we can start the ball rolling. Or it's not an issue anymore or was not a uh, target of, a, of your consensus? 